Okay, so we've been here in Ontario, we've been to Manitoba, we were just in Quebec, and now we are going across the across the world to Japan, and we've got a very special guest joining us from Japan, and that is Hiroko Yamada, where it's very early in the morning right now, and Hiroko is a World Baseball Softball Confederation board member of the baseball division. Uh, she's chair of the Women's Commission. She's an executive with the Baseball Federation of Japan. She's chair of the Women's Baseball Commission of the Baseball Federation of Asia. And finally, she's the delegation leader for the six time defending Women's Baseball World Champions, Team Japan. Hiroko is kindly joining us today to speak about amateur baseball in Japan and their use of rubber baseballs at the amateur level. So Hiroko, uh, welcome. And Thank we look you. forward to hearing from you today. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Um, let me share the document. Hi, everyone. I'm Hiroko Yamada. Thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to talk about women's baseball in Japan. Uh, I'm going to talk about of women's baseball in Japan and development in promotion of women's baseball in Japan and for the future of our sport. And to begin with, I'm briefly talk about women's baseball history in Japan. I don't want to go through everything because it takes time. And we have about 120 years of history and, but it was not always smooth. Um, Sometimes government banned women's baseball and get the uh, get the uh, women's baseball out of the list of PE classes. And, you know, one time it was completely disappeared. But in 1948, the first women's professional baseball team was formed. I think it was, uh, it was because of the influence from the US, the league of their own. And someone started the professional league in 1948. And then it became really popular and around 50s, I th in 50s, I think over 20 teams participated in that league. So it was very, very popular. But by 1971, about 50 years ago, all the teams disappeared. And women's baseball was also uh, decreasing. But in 80s, a lot of things happened and women's baseball become one of the upcoming sport right now in Japan. I don't wanna go through everything, um, but I'm more than happy to share this document. So if you're interested, you can um, take a look at it later. And currently, women's baseball in Japan, we use two kinds of balls. One is rubber ball. The 85% 80, of the baseball players use rubber ball and 50% is hardball, which is probably um, different from your baseball situation in Canada. A um, lot of uh, schools and club teams and community recommend rubber ball to start the baseball with because it's easier to start and much safer. So for the girls who want to play uh, baseball, we recommend rubber ball at the beginning around the age of until the age of 13 or 15. And if the players want to play seriously after junior high school, we recommend hardball because professionals and top, top teams use hardball and international also use hardball. So um, and until that age, we recommend rubber ball. And now we are, I'm going to introduce the population of women's baseball players in Japan. How many um, women's, women's players in Japan is about approximately 21,000 uh, women's baseball players. And good thing is we have a lot of U12 girls players and more and more girls are starting women's baseball. So that's good. It's good for our future at the moment and we try to keep that um, population also increase the population especially at the young people 
And this is the uh, structure of our organization. The red one is our organization. And we have U15 division, U18 division, high school division, and university and club corporate team division. We have four divisions and we will have the national tournaments of each category is following the, uh, the WBSC format. We have U15 nationals, U18 high school nationals, college nationals, and club team nationals. And we have national championship, which is top eight high school teams, top six college teams, and 18 club teams have participated and decides number one amateur queen team. And not only the nationals, we are also think it's important to have the regional leagues because um, for the categories, the nationals, you only have once or twice a year, but you have whole season to play. So we have six regional leagues, regional leagues right now. And if you are playing for high school and you were living in Tokyo, your team is in Tokyo, you participate the league in Tokyo and you can have a games over weekends. And then you also have the nationals for each category. Okay. The next one is development and promotion. How we developed and how we are developing our sport right now history in the making. Uh, I don't know if you know the Koshin Stadium in Japan. Koshin Stadium is a place for boys high school championship. Um, it's, our um, country is crazy about Koshin tournament. If you look at the fixtures, um, about 48 high school champion 48 high school boys high school teams can come to the coaching stadium to to um, to have a game there and the coaching stadium is always filled with people maybe 50,000 people at the final but every single day during the tournament 30,000 40,000 people there it's people are crazy about Koshien. And Koshien is always dream for high school baseball players for both men, boys and girls. But um, unfortunately, Koshien Stadium is only for boys high school teams and girls high school teams will never ever allowed to play in this stadium. Um, I think uh, our country has behind what the gender equality way behind that situation from other countries compared to other countries. But this year, after several years negotiation with Koshin Stadium, our dream came true and girls high school championship final was held in Koshin and the first time in the history. And that were, um, the girls were so happy and a lot of uh, girls stayed in the team, although some of the you know girls are trying um, uh, have some intention to quit the team because women's pro league was disappeared this year, finished this year. This year, so a lot of girls disappointed and could not see the future. But because of the Koshien, a lot of uh, girls stay in the sport, and I was very happy. And also. We are changing the history. There are 12 NPB teams in Japan. Um, NPB is like profession, men's professional baseball league, which is like MLB in your country. And um, two of them made a women's team. And one is coming up. And Hanshin Tigers has a women's team now. And Zebu Lions Ladies has a women's team. And now the big team, Tokyo Giants, which is like New York Yankees, um, has decided to have a women's team. So we were trying to um, raise more NPV team to have a professional league um, in Japan. Also, we are um, doing the uh, 
promotion with the local government, local cities. We encourage local city to promote their cities and town by women's baseball. And any city in town who wants to do a PR of women's baseball, we sanction them to call themselves as women's baseball town. So um, the cities stimulate their city town by women's baseball. So they sometimes invite national team training camp and um, or or inviting a famous players, women's players to their cities to PR of their town, which is good for us because it's a great PR for women's baseball and raise the awareness. And more and more city and towns became a women's baseball town and they, uh, they are promoting women's baseball at their budget. We don't have to pay um, all the promotion activities in their cities. They are the one who is paying and doing the promotion for women's baseball. But at the same time, they got a lot of media coverage and, and uh, their city citizens are happy about the city doing that. So it's a win-win situation for us. As I mentioned previously, this, we think it's important to have a local leagues and we have six local leagues right now and one in under preparation. The, all the six leagues are now sponsored by each NPB teams where the local, uh, I mean the NPB teams who is sit, located in Tokyo, Tokyo Giants supported the league in Tokyo and Hanshin Tigers, which is uh, located in Osaka, they supported Women's League in Osaka. So we ask NPB team to support our le regional leagues. And, and then also the Women's Baseball Town is supporting. So the league is getting bigger and bigger. And it's, we think it's very, very important to have a local leagues to keep the game going. Okay. Now, for the future of our sport, we are trying to brand our women's baseball. And we have, uh, have three main projects right now, grassroots activities, high performance, and global readership. Um, you can take a look at it later. But um, for the global leadership, I think, as a champion of women's baseball in the world, we think it's important to, to take a, a global leadership and we do uh, international activities. After the COVID pandemic, we will go back the international activities. We have a lot of uh, clinic in Taiwan, Korea, uh, Indonesia, and, uh, and we went to France and also Sri Lanka. We have done a lot of activities in baseball clinic in overseas and webinars for overseas women's baseball teams. And we are ready to go back to that activities once the situation get better. And also um, we have a high performance category by category, U15, U18, university, um, we will try to have a national team of each category. Although WBAC doesn't have a World Cup of U15 women, U18 women, they don't have it, but we still having a national team of each category. Okay. For the future of our sport, Federation always think what we need to do. We Federation has to be responsible for what we are doing and be stable and make sure the players are smiling all the time because if it's not fun, players will quit. Even though the environment is not good, but if it's fun, players will stay. So um, we're trying to 
make the plan or project which is that we can be responsible for and also the stable stability is important we had um, women's pro league but this year they completely closed disappeared it went 10 years maybe people think it's quite long 10 years is quite long but for us 10 years is finishing 10 years is not good we have to have the pro league which is very stable and responsible we we are not we should not jump on the rich guy and ask them to start a pro league no we should talk to npv to start the real healthy stable pro league that's that's the way for girls and for our sport in the future Finally, for Canada and Japan has been always good friends and good rivals. We had uh, Women's Baseball World Cup final a couple of times and we Canada, Canada is always our great partner. We, sh we believe that Canada, Japan should take a global leadership together to develop women's baseball and make the situation better for the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hiroko. I mean, uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, a testament to all the hard work that's being done in Japan and, and uh, with, your, with regards to your, your women's program and all the success that your national program has had uh, throughout the years. And it certainly comes down to, to the passion and the development opportunities that are available for your your teams and your athletes um, that's resulted in a lot of uh, your success over the years. I just wanted to, to pass along uh, a couple of comments because we do have some, some of your Canadian friends that are, that are tuning in tonight and watching in, uh, in Sherry Reiniger, um, who was just mentioning, uh, mentioning, you know, some of the things that I was speaking about when I was introducing you and that you've, You've been with the uh, the national program since at least 2008, Sherry says, and of course, uh, a big part of their their success and a lot of those those gold medals that uh, that have been won at the World Cup level, and uh, as well with with uh, with Jim Baba, who you also know very well, and he says it's it's great to uh, great to see you on here, and you're doing a wonderful job, and you're a tremendous advocate for the development of. Of female uh, female baseball as well. Um, just just I wanted to revisit the rubber baseball um, topic with you um, with regards to to boys that are playing baseball in Japan. Are they using the rubber baseball as well in their development um, as as amateur players? Yes, um, I think ninety percent of the boys uh, playing with a rubber ball, okay. and I. I think the, uh, you know, we, we had a gold medal at Tokyo 2020, the pitcher of the final game, starting pitcher of the final game, he is a rubber ball player and become a professional player. And wow. yeah, so. And, and at what ages would, would they be um, using the rubber balls until, until how old? Uh, until either age of 13 after junior high school or um, after six, after the elementary school, they changed the ball. Okay, and we do have, we do have another comment. Um, is, is there a way to, to follow you on, on social media or a way that people yeah. can, can get in touch if they have uh, any questions about the, the women's program or, or, um, or programs from the Japanese Federation perspective? Yes, I you can. I will. Um, shall I? You can use the uh, the chat feature. Okay. And uh, and type that in. That would be great. Okay. And just take another moment to see if there's any more 
questions coming in. A lot of comments, Hiroko, a lot of uh, thank yous and, and hellos from, from uh, your friends in Canada. So you've put your Instagram handle um, in the comment section or the chat section. So people can, uh, people can link up with you there. And um, if there's nothing else, we, uh, we will wish you a good day. And thank you once again for, for joining us. I'm and sorry, my English. Oh, no, no, no problem. Okay. No, it was a great presentation. And uh, once again, we're very grateful for, for your friendship over the years and uh, everything you've done in international baseball. Um, um, you're, you're a great friend with, uh, with Baseball Canada. And, and we hope to see you uh, sometime at a, at a Women's Baseball World Cup or another international baseball event uh, conti to continue on the friendship. So. Yes. Thanks again, Hiroko, and uh, take care and uh, all the best to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.